Welcome to Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, site of the World Bowling Tour Men's and Women's Finals presented by the PBA. The men's stepladder features Jason Belmonte, the three-time PBA Player of the Year. On the women's stepladder, Kelly Killick is looking for her third straight WBT women's win. For the fifth time, World Bowling will crown its men's and women's champions next. First, our women's finalist. She's the PWBA PBA Player of the Year, winner of seven major championships from Chicawaga, New York, Liz Johnson. Our number two seed is making her first appearance in a World Bowling Tour Women's Finals telecast from Stony Point, New York, Danielle McEwen. The number one seed is the winner of both the 2014 and 2013 World Bowling Tour Women's Finals. Can she make it three in a row? From Union, New Jersey, Kelly Hewlett. And now our men's finalists. The number three seed is the 2014 PBA World Champion. From Berkeley, California, Michael Fagan. The number two seed is a three-time and reigning PBA Player of the Year, representing Australia, Jason Belmonte. The number one seed has four career PBA Tour titles, including the 2013 PBA World Championship. From England, Dom Barrett. These are the WBT Men's and Women's Finals. And hello again, everyone. Mike Jakubowski with PBA Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Kimberly Pressler reports lane side today. The World Bowling Tour two-year rolling points list has developed two three-player stepladder finals for tonight, Randy, both in the men's and women's division. You're right, Mike J. Six of the greatest players in the world on hand today. These players travel the globe in search of bowling history, gold, and glory. And today, headlined by three-time and reigning Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. His opening matchup will feature Mike Fagan, who we haven't seen in a while on the PBA Tour. He will be bowling Jason Belmonte in that first match on the men's side. The winner of that opening match in the men's division will face the number one seed representing England, the Dominator, Dom Barrett. And arguably one of the hottest players on tour now, Mike. In women's division action, all world Liz Johnson. All world is right, seven time major championship winner, Liz Johnson. In search of her first world bowling tour win facing Danielle McEwen. And Danielle might be the most athletic of the women bowlers today. The winner of that match will face Kelly Kulik. Kelly Kulik has got all of the I moxie so needed here. to win on the PBA's biggest stage. And today's scoring will include the new World Bowling Tour scoring format. More on that in a moment. Now, here's Kimberly Pressler, lane side. Thanks, guys. I am lane side, and I'm joined with Liz Johnson here. Now, Liz, when we talked earlier, you said that you're coming off the best season that you've ever had. So what is your strategy today to take that momentum and hopefully and possibly win your first ever WBT championship? You just got to go out and make 10 great shots. You know, it's a little different format than when you, what we're used to, and but you still got to go out there and strike or, and fill frames. How do you plan to do that? Just try to make good shots and one shot at a time. Keeping it simple. I like it. Guys, back to you. 10 frame match, no extra shots in the 10th frame. A strike is 30 pins, a spare is 10 pins, plus the pinfall on that first shot. 
Max scores still 300. World scoring format in use in this World Bowling Tour final. Kevin Dornberger, part of World Bowling, the CEO, and his constant pursuit of bowling becoming an Olympic sport is testing different and varying scoring formats in order to qualify for future Olympic consideration. Liz Johnson opening shot in our semifinal women's division. Ten pin. If a player leaves and converts the 7-10 split on today's show, he or she will earn the $100,000 Ultimate Spare Bonus courtesy of Ultimate Bowling. And yeah, Mike, I've done a lot of bowling here at Woodland. I was fortunate enough to win here a few years back, and I've seen it this week. I've seen players bouncing pins out of the back pit. 7-10 conversion, very possible. And a spare for Liz Johnson on the board. And our first look at Danielle McEwen. One pro title at the 2015 Smithfield PWBA Tour Championship that closed out the first season back for the Professional Women's Bowling Association Tour. What a pitch for McEwen. Slaps the eight through and a strike. Take a look at the oil pattern that we're using on today's telecast, the 41-foot Montreal oil pattern. Multiple angles, you're gonna see the players going fairly straight early as that oil settles in and starts to dry out. The players will migrate a little bit more towards the center part of the lane. But Mike J, I really like this game. Watch this physical athletic move by Danielle McEwen. Ultimate. 7-10 in place and also the world scoring format will have complete scores at the end of every frame. Strike for 30, count plus 10 for spare, and any opens are count only. So at the end of the first frame, it's 30-19 McEwen over Liz Johnson. And this spare conversion is good for 10 more. Make it 19 in the second and 49 complete frame for Danielle McEwen. So if Liz Johnson strikes here on the right lane, we will be tied through two frames. Liz's confidence level on the lanes is always high. She has built an incredible career domestically and now on the world bowling scene. Second frame in an opening match. Oh. Mixing and a 4-8 for Liz. Little right of target, not enough friction outside to get that ball to hook up into the pocket. World scoring with a spare here would net 18 additional pins. We'll have complete scoring after each and every frame. Forty nine thirty seven McEwen 12 pin lead among all the players competing for points on the women's side of the world bowling tour Kulik McEwen and Johnson and the rest of the top 10 Missy Parkin Clara Guerrero Sherry Tan Diana Zabialova Shannon Ng, Sandra Anderson former top finalist and Jazreel Tan so that is a look at the world talent comprising the top 10 on the rolling two-year points list. And Liz Johnson strikes. She earns 30 in the third frame, taking it to 67. Straighter has always been greater for Liz Johnson. She said 2015, her best year ever in her career. Winning two majors, the Queens and the U.S. Open. Danielle McEwen watched the first World Bowling Tour shows, and it became a goal for her to compete around the world and earn those points. And here she is. Frame and nine with a spare would net her 19 for the frame. With a spare here, she will maintain a one-pin lead. And there's the athleticism of Danielle. Great position at the foul line. Steady head. Keeps her eyes on her target. 
Just a real solid physical game. And this youngster is learning how to bowl. Having a great season herself last season on the PWBA Tour. Top finishes on the World Bowling Tour, tied for third at the HH Amir Cup and fourth in the Bowmore AMF US Open. Earning enough points along the two years to qualify for the top three here. That's right, in a 30 pin frame for Danielle McEwen. Perfect balance in the foul line and a perfect result. Drifts just a little bit to the left. That gives that bowling ball room to swing underneath her shoulder. A nice back end reaction. And that's a 10 pin party in the pit. Liz Johnson, 41 years old. Out of Cheek Dewaga, New York. Fourth frame in the world scoring format. And that will earn 30 complete. 98, 97 through four, McEwen by one. Liz Johnson around the world on the World Bowling Tour over the last two years wins and titles at the 2015 Bowmore AMF US Open and the 2015 USBC Queens and a runner-up finish in the Women's World Championship. Fifth frame, Johnson trails by one using the world scoring format. Six around the ten. Real good shot there. The six just wrapping around the ten pin. Liz really wanted that one. Spare here would be additional 19 for Johnson in the world scoring format. Liz Johnson, world score after five, 116. Danielle McEwen, everything from Danielle's game, Randy, keys on timing, and it starts with the feet. And she's always working on lots and lots of different things, even though her game looks very simple. 30 pin strike for McEwen. She moves to 128, takes a 10 pin lead halfway home. The winner here moves on to face Kelly Hewlett. 12 pin lead now for Danielle McEwen, Mike. Shreds the rack and getting back to her physical game. She says, you know, my game feels very complicated. How can it feel complicated? Well, and, and you know, we talked about this and I said, you know, I can really relate back when I was competing full time. I had that simple looking kind of game, but I was always working real hard on having good time. Six around the 10, solid 10 for McEwen. Right now, it looks like the left lane, the 10 pin is nailed down to the back part of the lane as both players leaving ring and tens on that lane. Spare and 19 additional for Danielle McEwen. World Bowling was initially founded in 1926 as the International Bowling Association. We'll find out how many countries support that movement coming up. The World Bowling Tour Men's and Women's Finals presented by the PBA is brought to you by Barbasol Shaving Cream, America's leader for a close, comfortable shave. Now with new rust-proof aluminum bottoms. By the United States Bowling Congress creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. By hotelplanner.com, the best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. And by Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. The sporting community of Indianapolis, football, and of course, the greatest spectacle in racing. And the great support of Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis supporting professional bowling. Today's Columbia 300 fun fact. 
Since its inception in 2011, the World Bowling Tour has held events in 14 different countries. Finland, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Germany, Thailand, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Korea, the United Arab Emirates, Austria, France, Australia, and the USA. Now, Liz Johnson, under the world scoring format, 30 pins on a strike that she can come with it one, and it is a nine pin world scoring, 30 for a strike, count plus 10 for a spare, count only with an open frame. Liz struggling on that right lane, keeps getting it just a little bit wide. She says the key to my game is accuracy. Right now, Liz not being very accurate on that lane. She may want to just move her feet a, a pit, just a pinch to the right and tighten up her angle just a little bit. She's got a really nice look though on this left lane. Last time up though, working on a double, she left the ring 10. Liz Johnson entering her third decade as a professional bowler and special memories in Indy, her first pro win coming here. And a 30 pin strike for Liz Johnson. Takes her to 165 through seven frames using world score. Here's where D, uh, Danielle needs to step up and really impose her will. She's got a nice lead, and she can increase it to 12 with a strike here. Strike for 30, 177, 165. World score plus 12 for McEwen. Today's stat provided by Roltec. This week we took a look at the PWBA season averages of our three competitors, Liz Johnson, Danielle McCule, and Kelly Kulik, also leading the PWBA in averages. And that was for last year on the PWBA tour. And this is the rankings based on the two-year points list on the World Bowling Tour. McEwen, 207 through eight. Big shot coming up here for Liz Johnson as we take a look at her arsenal using the Alpha Crux. Six around 10. Nine plus 10 for the spare would net 19 under world scoring. Running out of frames. Good shot finally here on the right lane, but just another 10 pin for Liz. Six around the 10. World score 19 for Liz Johnson. And a 23 pin advantage for Danielle McEwen. Coming up a little later, we'll have our three player step ladder in our men's division featuring Mike Fagan, Jason Belmonte, and the number one seed, Dom Barrett, coming next in the men's division of the World Bowling Tour Finals. Ninth frame. Another 10. With the new scoring, a spare here will give her 203 in the ninth. She's running out of time and running out of frames. And the way Danielle McEwen's playing it right now, I don't see her letting up at all. Danielle is locked in, making great shots. Max score under world scoring from the start is still 330 times 10. The 10th frame will feature just one shot, no fill ball. Chance to earn 30 for a strike with uh, the 10th frame yet to come. Arsenal for Danielle McEwen. Eternal Cell on the right lane, Hypercell Skid on the left. Foundation frame for McEwen. Mixing and a light seven. We'll give her 226 with a spare in the ninth. 
just a little bit right of target, comes in late, only leaving the seven pin. If Liz Johnson will throw, can throw the one strike in the 10, best she can shoot, 233. Eight pins under the world scoring system will shut out Liz Johnson, McEwen, just eight to advance to the championship match to face Kelly Kulik. That's a winner. Danielle McEwen advances to face Kelly Kulik in the World Bowling Tour Women's Division. Only one ball in the 10th frame under this new scoring system. 32 late for Liz Johnson, 256, 233 final, and McEwen will move on. To be the best in the world at your craft and receive this memento, will award it following our championship match. PBA's Extra Frame is your home for exclusive live coverage of the PBA Tour, PBA 50 Tour, and PWBA Tour events. The newly revamped video subscription service will feature more than 1,000 hours of live coverage in 2016. Don't miss a moment of the action. Three-day, monthly, and yearly subscriptions are available. Click on the Extra Frame link and get started. Danielle McEwen wins the opening match against Liz Johnson. Yeah, she was real good and hit the pocket. She never missed the pocket. She threw six strikes in game one to Liz Johnson's four. And in the new scoring system, it's all about striking. And down now lane side to Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. I am joined by Liz once again. And Liz, even in defeat, you have a smile on your face. Why don't you walk us through what happened out there? Uh, I made some good shots. Uh, I, I made one poor shot after the break. It was kind of a long break for me and, and uh, one earlier bad shot. But I, overall, I was, I was happy with my performance. Well, despite this loss, you've had a phenomenal season so far. So what's next for you? Uh, I got the PBA League that I got drafted for uh, coming up in April. So I'm a Portland Lumberjack. I'm pretty excited about that. And then we got the Ladies Tour coming up in the summer, uh, 12, 13 weeks uh, all over the country. So it's going to be an exciting year so far. Well, you have a busy year ahead of you, and we look forward to seeing you during the uh, PBA leagues. Thanks a lot, Kimberly. Oh, Guys, back to you. And thank you, Kimberly. Mike Jakubowski with Randy Peterson. Randy Danielle McEwen, a winner, and both on the men's tour and women's bowling tour. Youth movement is for real. Yeah, it really is. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of that because the, the youngsters are emulating the pros that they watch on television. But I think it's too early to compare the ladies tour to the men's tour because I think there's still a lot of game left in Liz Johnson who had her greatest year ever last season and Kelly Kulik, uh, she's, she's got a lot uh, left in the tank as well. Tough to draw a comparison between the two. Certainly you can say that about the men's tour. Not so sure about the women's tour yet. We're seeing that impact with Danielle McEwen and more ladies behind her, perhaps on the PWBA Tour. We'll have our championship match. Kelly Kulik, Danielle McEwen next from Woodland Bowl in Indy. The World Bowling Tour Women's Division Finals. Coming up, championship match. The number two seed, Danielle McEwen, will face the number one points earner, Kelly Kulik. Kelly Kulik, back-to-back -back winners of this event, seeking a third consecutive win. She's been really great in this event. She knows how to beat the guys, too. The only woman to win a PBA Tour title and a major at the Tournament of Champions, Kulik, has been the best in the world for the last two years. And she stands by with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Mike. So, Kelly, you know what? This is your third time that you are up here. 
but you have said in the past year and a past that you've had distractions, but you're coming in as the number one seed. So how is it that you've maintained your focus even with all the distractions? You know, when I'm on the lanes, my job is to perform. Uh, I have to let the outside distractions just be there on the outside. And when I'm in the building, it's me against the pins. So I'm really going to focus on what got me here, my skills, me winning a few events, and uh, just let my game shine the way it knows how to. All right. Well, thank you so much, and good luck today. Thank you. Guys? Thanks, Kimberly. Our championship match is being conducted using world scoring, the world bowling to a world scoring format. 10 frame match, 300 is still possible. You earn 30 pins per strike. A spare will get you 10 plus the pin follow the first shot. Open frame is pin fall for the frame. 10 times 30 is still 300 for a perfect game, requiring 10 shots using world scoring. Now Danielle McEwen, as directed by the number one seed, will begin on the left lane. And a strike and 30 pin world score for Danielle McEwen in the first. Danielle becoming just the ninth woman in PBA history to win a PBA regional title. She did that in 2015 at South Point in Las Vegas. Kelly Kulik, 38, 12-time pro, nine pro titles, and two-time defending world bowling tour champion opening shot in this championship match. 30 pin strike using world score. And we've got an even match. Talk about a solid game. Kelly's always worked very diligently on mechanics and, and being in position. And she creates a lot of really good positions with her timing, uh, her arm swing, her hand, getting her left hip out of the way so she can swing the ball underneath her right shoulder. Consistent performances on the World Bowling Tour. He's number one seed, and the landing was rough, but the pitfall is good. Yeah. She looked like she stuck just a little bit and kind of tugged it and thumbed it down. And the lanes have de developed in a way to where there's a little bit of hold left of target. There she is sticking right there. You can see her hand kind of stay in the ball a little bit longer than normal. But because she has such a great arm swing, she's able to direct the ball online. Hewitt line two pin. And the first time she misses the pocket in a game and a couple of frames. You know, when you bowl somebody like Kelly Kulik, that's got to create a little bit of anxiety and tension for anyone. McEwen watched these World Bowling Tour shows and wanted to get out and compete around the world and earn the points necessary, and uh, now getting a chance to face uh, what, who many people consider to be the greatest uh, lady ever to throw a bowling ball in this generation, Kelly Kulik. And speaking of generations, McEwen has the youthful generation taking advantages of these opportunities to compete, not only in the United States, but all across the globe. Well, Danielle also travels the world with boyfriend and tour player Marshall Kent, which is huge. I mean, and she told us both. What a great help he's been for her bowling and her career. And, you know, the two of them traveling the world together. Talk about, talk about a perfect match. A match made in a bowling center. Marshall Kent and Danielle McEwen, uh, men's and women's winners in this past year's USA team trials. Now, Kelly Kulik, 60 pin world score, third frame, can add 30 to it with another strike. 10 pin. 10 pin plus bear with net 19 and an even match. Flat 10. Watch the six pin. So we take another look at her hitting the foul line. Six pin, second to the right, just go to the sidewall and lay DOA into the right gutter. World score, 9 plus 10, 19, 79 apiece. In addition to Kelly Kulik's great 
physical game. As we look at her accomplishments, two-time World Bowling Tour champion, defeating Liz Johnson last year, Missy Park in the year before, five career women's majors. And what makes Kelly so great is, in addition to her great physical game, Randy, is her mental attitude. Her, to her, being great means never being satisfied. Yeah, and, and I think one of the great accomplishments also is she was featured in ESPN the magazine, The Body Issue, in 2011. She worked out so much in advance of that photo shoot, and you can still see that photo shoot online. And very gutsy thing to do, as that has become such an important spread each and every year. I still can't believe they didn't ask me. I would have bought a copy. That's weird. <laughs> Seven and ten go down. 109-pin world score for Kulik under the world scoring format. McEwen must have a strike for 30 pins to even up the match. And mark it, 109-109 through four. Next Sunday, the Stars turn out in force as nine-time NBA All-Star Chris Paul hosts the 2016 Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. Among those scheduled to appear, Terrell Owens, Hope Solo, C.J. Anderson for the Super Bowl champion, Denver Broncos next Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Any idea what kind of game C.J. Anderson has? I've heard it's, uh, it's on par with Nelly. Really? It's that good. Oh, so Nelly's got game. Yes, yes, yes. How about that message, sir? Great fall for Danielle McEwen. Lending to our Barbasol close shave of the day. Head pin goes to the sidewall, gets misdirected. You don't see a messenger like that very often. Pretty cool. Danielle McEwen now with a three bagger. Another week 10 on the right lane. A little softer speed or a little more hit at the bottom so Kelly can get the ball to face the one three, a little better angle and she'll carry that 10 pin. The holy grail of the mental game, Randy. Kelly always working not to try to be perfect because that can take away from what you do best at times. I'll tell you the key to the mental game is figuring out a way to get into the right place so that your body will perform the way you've trained it to perform. And Kelly Kulik's one of the greatest ever at doing that. So we take a look at her arsenal throwing an alpha crux. World score format, 30 for a strike, 10 plus count for a spare, count only on an open frame as Kelly Kulik Trails by 11 under world scoring, sixth frame. And another 10 pin. I like that one. That ball much straighter up the lane, a little less I like that one. ground covered, and it looked like it laid in the oil a little bit too long. This is a ringing 10. The six is gonna go around, a second pin from the right, boom, right around the 10 pin. Right now, a lot of frustration for Kelly. She likes what she's doing physically, but the ball is not going through the pins the way she wants it to. It's always a sign when you're hitting the pocket and you're not carrying all 10, the bowling ball is not going through the pins the right way. Nineteen pin frame for Kulik in the six, 147 on the world score. Danielle McEwen looking to outlast Kelly Kulik and claim the World Bowling Tour Championship. The rest of our championship is coming. Welcome back to Woodland Bowl. Many consider Woodland the Yankee Stadium of bowling. Great support over the years of Kelly Kulik seeking her third straight. As we look at the speed and revs of Kelly Kulik. So this is regular speed as your bowling ball. It takes about 2.5 seconds to get down the lane. Now, in slow-mo, we can actually count the revolutions. So 14 revs in two and a half seconds over 60 feet. So her miles per hour is calculated 
at just a little over 16 miles an hour. Her RPMs at 336. On the women's tour, that's a mid, kind of a medium to high rev rate range. Kelly Kulik is a player on the ladies tour who can actually get in and open up the lane because of her ball speed and her rev rate. And we'll take a look at Jason Belmonte and his statistics in our men's division. Rest of our championship match in world scoring. McEwen can earn 30 with a strike, six frame. Didn't like it, and a four pin. Toughest shots are always the ones out of commercial break, and Danielle McEwen didn't like this shot as it, it's a little left of target. Not a terrible shot by any means, just a little bit high leaving the four pin. McEwen earns a world score of 19 in the frame. 158-147 complete world score and an 11 pin advantage for Danielle McEwen looking to unseat Kelly Kulik, the two-time women's world bowling tour champion. Kelly Kulik, two-time past winner. Carolyn Doran Ballard winning the first. Missy Parkin back in 2012. Mika Koavuniemi, two-time winner. Mika is now semi-retired coaching for the United Arab Emirates. And the 10-pin falls for McEwen. 30 for the frame. Well, this looked like it was going to be a ringing 10. And watch. Six pin goes around the 10, and the head of that pin catches enough of the 10-pin to take it out. Danielle likes that one. He looks seventh frame. Thirty pin strike. One eighty eight, one seventy seven, and Kulik trails by eleven. Coming up next, it's the World Bowling Tour Men's Finals. Top seed England's Dom Barrett, the Australian Jason Belmonte, and the American Mike Fagan in the opening match. Fagan Belmonte, World Bowling Tour Men's Finals, coming up next. Under the world scoring system, 30 for a strike, 10 plus pinfall for a spare. Open frame, you take what you get, eighth frame for Kulik. And only one ball in the 10th frame. No fill ball in the 10. Head down, the ball crosses, and a 10 pin. Better than what they were. She's struggling with the approach on that left lane, and this is the full Yankee to the left of target. Crosses over, barely catches a piece of the head pin, leaving the 10. And that was the shot that she really wanted and really needed. Plus 10 for the spare, world score of 19 in the eighth for Kulik. Brings her to 196. Danielle McEwen has enjoyed traveling to Japan and Thailand and Qatar. She really enjoys the Middle East. And what an opportunity for those on the World Bowling Tour to not only compete at the highest level, but to see some of the great sights around the globe. Eighth frame. Ten. Another soft 10 on the right lane. Seems to be a common theme. Beautiful arm swing. Hand underneath it. She liked it. Just a little soft entering the pocket. McEwen, a member of the winning team, including Anthony Pepe, Matt McNeil, Matt O'Grady, and Alex Cavagnero at the inaugural PBA Team Challenge as a part of the PBA Fall Classic in Las Vegas. Women's competition, PBA regional winner, PWBA tour champion. Support of Susan Verano, Danielle's mom. 
foundation frame for the Q. 30 pins. World score, 237 through 9. The contrast to Liz Johnson, who looks at basically at the foul line when she lets go of it. Look how far down the lane Danielle McEwen targets. What a great result there. Beautiful shot. Max score Kelly Kulik, 256. Max score Danielle McEwen, 267. In the nose, three, six, and the 10. He's fighting it now. Sometimes as a professional, you struggle with the approaches and it gets in your head mentally. Well left of target. You'd, you'd have to pump some extra STP in the middle part of the lane for that one to hold line. Seven and 10 for the spare. 17 world score in the ninth frame for Kulik. Will bring her to 213. Max score 243 with a strike. McEwen will need just seven pins to claim the World Bowling Tour Women's Championship. Yet to come, our men's division World Bowling Tour three player stepladder final. Pin 10th frame, 243, final score for Kelly Kulik. Great players are never satisfied, and I promise you, Kelly Kulik, not happy right now. Danielle McEwen watched the very first World Bowling Tour shows. She made it a goal to compete around the world and earn the points necessary to be here, and now on the verge of claiming the championship over Kelly Kulik, 10th frame. It's a winner wow. on a solid eight. Well, I promise you, nobody's surprised that Danielle McEwen won this. She is a superstar on the rise and one of the best female bowlers in the world. And now the best. Champion, Danielle McEwen. Kimberly will talk with Danielle after the break. And still to come, Australia's Jason Belmonte and the return of Mike Fagan kick off the WBT men's final. Danielle McEwen claims the World Bowling Tour Women's Championship. Yeah, in a great break right there, rolling that 10 pin. But she caught fire early with a three bagger at the beginning of that match. And it was all Danielle late. Kelly Kulik struggling on the left lane with the approach. And Danielle McEwen captures this title for the first time. Kimberly Pressler is lane side with our champion. Thanks, guys. And Danielle, I see that you're very excited down here for good cause, too. You know, when we talked earlier, you said that two years ago you saw the WBT championships on TV and you made a mental note that you were going to be here. Not only are you here, but you just beat the defending champion. What's running through your mind? Um, it's absolutely unbelievable thrill. Like I said, it was just my goal to make it to this point, to be the top three in the world, to make it onto this show and to come out the winner. And against Kelly and Liz, the best women's bowlers out there, it's amazing. Well, let's talk about the fact that they are two of the best women's bowlers in the world. You said earlier they help pave the way for women bowlers, including yourself. What does it mean to you that you actually beat both of them to take this today? It means a lot. I mean, they've really driven me my entire career to just try to follow in their footsteps and hopefully catch up to them. And I just hope that I can do the same as far as the next generation coming up. I hope people look up to me and say, that's where I want to go one day, and this is their dream to make it here one day. <laughs> and I have no doubt that they will, and congratulations on winning the WBT Championship. You've earned it. Thank you. <laughs>
Our Ebonite flashback takes us back to the inaugural World Bowling Tour Finals in 2011 in Las Vegas. Carolyn Dorn Ballard won the women's event with a 207-162 final match over Sweden Sandra Anderson. CDB just seriously flexing her muscles in that match. Mika Koivuniemi won the men's side by defeating Sean Rash 237-224 in the final match. Sean Rash having some trouble. A couple of open frames helped Mika Koivuniemi to victory. Coming up next, it's our men's division three-player step ladder featuring Mike Fagan. And we've not seen Mike Fagan in uh, quite a while. Somebody said he's hitting the books. He is hitting the books. In fact, he's in pursuit of his MBA at Cal Berkeley. And that is a pretty esteemed program as the master of Faganomics taking uh, his strike ball in the classroom. You know, I really miss him out here. He was one of our stars, but you know what they say, Mike? Everybody loves the smart guy. Everybody loves the smart guy. Mike Fagan modeled his game after Pete Weber. And as we go to break, enjoy this promo feature of a 30 for 30 short, the bad boy of bowling featuring our own Pete Weber. The World Bowling Tour Men's Finals presented by the PBA rolls on at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana. Mike Fagan, the number three seed here, earning his major title at the 2014 PBA World Championship. Just was brilliant on this day, making shot after shot, especially when he needed it most. Mike Fagan stands by with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, Mike. Mike, we haven't seen you since last summer, and uh, you've taken time off of the tour. What have you been up to? Well, Kimberly, I'm out currently at uh, UC Berkeley Haas School of Business getting my MBA. Uh, planning on phase two of my life. I mean, my bowling career was uh, amazing, and I'm trying to capitalize on that and for a career in business. So how do you shake off the rust because you have been bowling full time since last summer to take on three time player of the year, Jason Vilbonte? Well, it's going to be a tall task, but, you know, I'm just here to have fun and enjoy all these experiences that I, that I have left. All right. Well, have fun and good luck to you today. Thanks, Kimberly. Guys. Thanks, Kimberly. Friends uh, on the lanes, not so much uh, during competition. Fagan and Jason Belmonte will do battle in our opening match to determine who faces Don Barrett for the World Bowling Tour Championship. He's got a lot going in his favor, Mike J. He's loose, he's relaxed, he's having fun, and he's got great time, hair. <laughs> Too quiet. Fourteen years on tour and attending at the Haas School of Business at UCAL Berkeley. And opening the shot for Fagan is a strike, and the, the door is open, Randy, for future competition for Fagan as he pursues his NBA. Yeah, it really is, but, you know, he's, uh, like he said, he's going on to phase two of his life, and Mike Fagan, uh, graduate of St. John's University, smart guy, he's always been a smart guy, and finance has always been something that's fascinated him. Three-time and reigning Krishenko PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte, number two in points overall in the World Bowling Tour. Begins with a strike using World Bowling Scoring. 30 for a strike, 10 plus count for a spare, and open frame results in the pins you earn. World Bowling Tour, World Scoring in effect, also for our men's championship. World scoring in effect here. The CEO of World Bowling, Kevin Dornberger, in search of ways to further have bowling be valuable for the International Olympic Committee. It's just an easier way for those that are not familiar with our sport, oh my, to, to kind of get a grasp on, on the scoring. Does that count for nine, ten and a half? Watch this ball go right by the nine pin. No halvesies in world scoring. 
Pinfall with a spare would earn Belmonte 19 in the second frame. And that's how it goes down. 19 makes 49 a complete score in the second frame. Oh my frame. goodness. You know, regular scoring in our sport, a strike is 10 plus what you get on the next two balls. A spare is 10 plus what you get on the next ball. And sometimes it's a little tough. You know, I used to keep score when I was younger. I learned how to keep score using the yellow pencils and the hot telescore units. There's a lot of folks that grew up with automatic scoring that really don't understand how to keep score in sport. This is an easier way. No rust on that swing. 30 plus 30 equals 60 for Mike Fagan. Here's a look at the top 10 on the World Bowling Tour on the two-year rolling points list. Barrett Belmonte Fagan just missing. Oscu Palerma, Sweden's Martin Larson, Sean Rash from the USA in sixth. And Mika Koivuniemi, seventh. Thomas Larson, eighth. Bill O'Neill and Stuart Williams round out the top 10 on the World Bowling Tour. And there is the CEO of World Bowling the internationally recognized governing body for bowling. Keep the music on the whole time. Seated next right. to the PBA Tour Commissioner, Tom yeah. Clark. Fagan not showing much rust early, Randy. No, you're right. Two completely different routes to the pocket. Mike Fagan, much more direct and much straighter up the lane. <laughs> and Stunner, five pin. Mike Fagan really came into his own on this tour when he perfected his straight game. You know, he first came out, he could really hook it gutter to gutter and struggled when he had to go straighter. He worked on it for about two years and it won him his first major. Nine plus 10 for the spare, world score of 19 in the third and 79 complete through three for Fagan, who won his first title in 2008 with Danny Wiseman at the PBA exempt doubles classic for singles title coming later at the 2010 Dick Weber Open, followed by that major that we saw. Jason Belmonte up his arsenal is the high road. The six indicates six out of 10 for hook potential, third frame. 30 pin strike, even match in world story. Power and revolutions of Jason Belmonte to go along with excellent pin carry. And you see it right there. The unfortunate pocket nine pin in the second frame, otherwise he's perfect through three, but you don't see Jason and a lot of the two-handed no thumb players leave a lot of solid nines, um, a lot of solid eights because their bowling balls slow down so much going through the pins because of all that power, their pin carry is exceptional. Fourth frame in our opening match. The winner here will get Dom Barrett for the championship in the World Bowling Tour fourth frame. And that's a 30 pin strike for Jason Belmonte. Well, we couldn't see it because Jason was standing in the way, but that time the nine pin was up yeah. and he actually stared at it and made it fall. Like, don't you even dare. Ooh, <laughs> that was close. Intense. Belmonte clears the deck, 109 complete with world scoring. Fagan, to keep pace, must strike fourth frame. Whoa. And a reset. Still a little rusty. <laughs> Fagan admitting a little rust. Here's a look at his arsenal. He's got the phase, not the strongest ball in his bag. It's an eight on the scale of 10. Fagan needs to pump the brakes, take a deep breath and regroup. Mixing oh. four pin. Last two shots could have struck easily. Very often you see the Swisher four pin standing. And Fagan early on doesn't look like he's got any rust on him at all. He's throwing it really nice.
Fagan picks up the spare that's nine plus 10 equals 19 under the world score. 98 complete for Fagan. He now trails by 11. Look at Mike Fagan's top finishes. Prior to going to business school, he competed for two years on the World Bowling Tour, earning his victory at the World Championship in 2014. Runner up at the Men's World Championship and third at the 2014 Kingdom event. Mixing strike and 30, world score. One, 28 through five for Mike Fagan. Another light hit that finally strikes for Mike Fagan. Hasn't, has not missed the pocket yet and struck three out of five frames. Could be all five real easy. Now, Jason Belmonte sporting the facial fescue, working on two in a row. In the nose and the eight count with a spare in world scoring would net 18 pins. Never got it far enough to the right. And with the rev rate that high, not enough oil in the middle of the lane to keep that on line. So the count there, a feature of the world scoring, 18 for the frame. And now Belmonte trails by one through five. Remember, a strike counts as 30 for the frame. A spare is 10 plus what the player knocked down on that first ball. So that frame there for Belmonte, 18. Trails by one as we take a look at his WBT top finishes. Masters first. Masters again for a second. The Oklahoma Open. Sixth frame, Belmonte. <laughs> Off balance landing, but a strike plus 30 for Belmonte. The king of swing, Mike Fagan, back in action against his good friend Jason Belmonte. The winner advances to the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship when we return. Three-time PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte, locked up with Mike Fagan in our opening match for the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship. Let's get behind the numbers with Jason Belmonte. About two seconds for Jason Belmonte typically to get his bowling ball from the foul line to the pins. Let's take a look at his revolutions en route. How about 19 and two seconds, do the math. About 20 miles an hour with a rev rate approaching 600. Definitely the higher end of the scale on the men's tour. I'm not sure there's a lot that approach or that get close to that 600 number. I mean, maybe Osku Palerma gets close to that. EJ Tackett with his thumb in can get close to that number. But don't kid yourself, folks. As far as power goes, that's the high end of the spectrum. Gold standard is Belmont. Fagan mixes up a strike. That's good for 30 world score in the frame. Through six, Fagan 158, a one pin advantage over Belmont. Right foot open, keeps the hips nice and open. And again, a lot of light shots for Mike. The last two carries all 10, two in between. Shaker five pin, shaker four pin, and he started with a double. Fagan, formerly known as the master of Faganomics, numbers and Finance have always been in his interest level as he attends school at UC Berkeley, and that's how he knows. Oh! And a break on the ninth pin. Come 30 on. pin frame. <laughs> Remember that Belmonte in the second frame left the solid nine. Fagan trips the ninth pin. Watch this. Pretty cool. Some good pin action there. Yeah, you know, the late great Dick Weber said, winning never gets old, and Mike Fagan just showed you why that is with that great react. 
Seventh frame, Del Monte. He's done a lot of winning himself. And that's a 30-pin frame. Maintains the one-pin deficit, does Belmonte. 188-187, world score complete through seven. We keep an eye on this next shot on the left lane. Last time up on that lane, he stuck. Kelly Kulik in the women's finals, she stuck twice on the left lane. Three frames to play. World scoring in effect, 30 per frame, including the 10th frame, with the one opportunity for a 30-pin strike, no fill ball. First crack of the eighth belongs to Jason Belmonte. He trails by one. Yes. 30 pin strike for Belmonte. World score 217. Well, if both players take it to the 10th frame, they'll be in the 270s. Fagan can strike out 8th, 9th, and 10th for 278. Jason Belmonte striking out ninth and 10th gives him 277. And that one comes up short, 245. Trying to go straight, sometimes you run the risk of missing the finger holes at the bottom. And that's exactly what happened right there. Fagan just misses this a little bit right. And it's the 2-4-5. World score, 17 max in the eighth with the spare conversion. Seven plus 10, 17 for Fagan. And this is our hammer tough spare replay. Rear act, please. Belmonte with a 12 pin advantage now after that spare for Fagan, and we'll get a re rack. Max score, Mike Fagan, 265. He still has a chance to win this opening match on the men's side. Jason Belmonte again, striking the ninth and 10th, 277. World score of 30 in the ninth, 235 complete. Frame for Fagan. more direct, a little more towards the second arrow on that left lane and a perfect shot when he needed it most, giving him a chance and setting up the 10th frame. Nine spare is all Belmonte needs here in the 10th. World score, nine spare, and Belmonte moves on. 10th frame. Not only not a nine, that's Come eight on. count split. Well, now he needs to convert. For a tie, should Fagan strike in the 10th? It looked like he got soft and short on this shot, leaving both the four and the 10. Somehow, he's going to have to try to slide the four pin over. <laughs> Get the ball over into here, throw it into the 10. For the count. Unbelievable. 
And that's a nine pin world scorer in the 10th, 256 final. <sighs> Mike Fagan must strike on this ball. The difference is 21. The only option for Fagan is a 30 point world score in the 10th for the win. Taking a lot of time. Fagan on the full reset and the full reset of the pre-shot routine strike to advance to the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship. Fagan slaps out the 10. He's a winner advancing to face Don Barrett. Some things, Randy, you don't forget. Beautiful shot. Fagan advances to the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship in pursuit of the World Bowling Tour woo, trophy, symbolic of the best in the world on the World Bowling Tour Championship matches coming. The World Bowling Tour Men's Final presented by the PBA rolls on at Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana and the 2016 World Bowling Tour schedule ready to circle the globe, getting underway February 24th with the HH Emir Cup. And then tournaments in Bahrain, Germany, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait in the Middle East, wrapping up with the PBA World Series of Bowling 8 in Reno later in 2016. Kimberly Pressler is with Kevin Dornberger, CEO for World Bowling. Thanks, Mike. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me here. So the scoring system today is a little bit different than last year's. Why don't you tell me what the changes are? Well, the, the changes are, are pretty simple. It's a strike is 30, the frame is done. Nines pair is 19, that frame, frame is done. Nine zero is nine, the frame is done. The premise is that at the end of each frame, there's no more thinking or guessing. There's no more waiting for more shots. There's, there's a definitive score at the end of each frame, and somebody's winning and somebody's losing. Simplifying it. So why did you decide to go with this type of scoring? Well, we tried, as you know, match play last year, frame by frame, and, and, and I guess most people weren't thrilled with it. Uh, this is much closer to our current scoring system, but it accomplishes the goal, and that is clarifying who's winning and who's, who's losing at, at the end of each frame. Now, I know that you were spearheading the push to try and get bowling into Olympics. Um, what is going on with that? Well, we had, a, we had a bonus opportunity for Tokyo 2020. It was earlier than the, the rules that existed uh, allowed us before. We were in the, the final eight. We were in the short list, which we, bowling's never been in the short list before. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't make the cut. We're not in Tokyo, but we're still in play for 2024, which is the normal process. So. Uh, we're as close as we've ever been. People out there, don't give up. We're going to be an Olympic sport pretty soon. I would love to see bowling as an Olympic sport. Thank you so much for your time, Kevin. You're Guys, welcome. back to you. Thanks, Kimberly. Coming up, it's the men's final on the World of Bowling Tour. Mike Fagan takes on England's Dom Barrett. When we return to Woodland Bowl. Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana, home of the World Bowling Tour Finals presented by the PBA. It's our men's championship match featuring the number one seed, Don Barrett. And we haven't seen him win, but he did in 2012 for a major at the World Championship. Yeah, his first major came down to the 10th frame. Remember, he thought the score was different. Got the first hit, he actually needed two. He got real excited after the first one. He needed, he needed pins after that. Uh, thankful he came back with a great shot after it, and he gets to hoist the hardware. Let's go down to the floor in Kimberly. Thanks, guys. I'm actually joined with the number one seed, Dom Barrett. Now, Dom, you know, a lot of the players have told me before that arguably you are one of the hottest players on tour right now. You just missed making the TOC, and the last three shows you've been on, you've gotten second. So what do you have to do today to just get over that hump to take home a win? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I've done a lot of stuff all right in the shows I've made, and I think I'm just going to continue to do that. I've had some success early, and I think that evens out when you get on TV. So I think I've been through the seconds now, and I'm ready for another win. 
And uh, thank you so much, and I wish you good luck today. Thank you. Thanks. Guys, back to you. He's Thanks. got great eyebrows. He does indeed. Those things are manicured perfectly. And he has the uh, PBA record for highest bounce when spiking a rosin bag after that 2012 World Championship win. And then he cleaned up the count for the official victory. Mike Fagan, the number three overall on the World Bowling Tour points list, takes the points leader on for the World Bowling Tour Championship. And the crown of best bowler on the planet. Fagan getting right back into the saddle in pro competition with that strike to defeat Belmonte. Now opening shot for the championship match it is a 10-pin using the world scoring system. Nine plus 10 would be 19. Fagan only missing the pocket once thus far and almost a pocket 7-10. We're going to see Don Barrett play the lanes a little bit different, though. Nine count, 10 for the spare using the world scoring. That's 19 in the complete first frame for Mike Fagan, 30 for a strike. 10 plus pinfall for the spare, and the open frame results in just that pinfall. And now opening shot for Don Barrett. He's 30 out of Colchester, England. Four tour titles, six years on tour, and the three-time World Bowling Riders Bowler of the Year. And his opening pitch. Powerful strike for Barrett. Heavy rolling, and that ball went through the pins real hard. Don Barrett reminds me a lot of Wes Malad. Smaller frame, you know, not as not that big body. Wes Malad's a big man, but this is the mini-me of West Malott, in my opinion. Great release. A lot of the same fundamentals, the swing, but that, that beautiful release at the bottom, that's the money maker. As we take a look at the World Bowling Tour scoring, 10-frame <clears throat> match, no extra shots in the 10th frame. A strikes 30, a spares 10, plus whatever you knock down. 10 is still a 300 game, which is possible for Merritt. 30 plus 30 equals 60 complete through two using world scoring. Mike Fagan, uh, not uncomfortable playing the, the role of underdog. Taking out the three-time player that you're now facing, Don Barrett. <laughs> 30, world score 49 through two for Fagan. He's been in that swish zone all day. Needs to find a way to strike more. The king of swing, that wrist that's inverted at the top, recovers, gets his hand back underneath it at the bottom. And wife Emily here in the crowd today, showing her appreciation for for Mike in that last strike. And her motivation, Emily, motivates Mike to get better. And interesting to note that Mike's international background was the key to his acceptance in the Haas School of Business, currently studying at Cal Berkeley. All of the international experience around the world as a professional bowler, third frame. Making good shots. Just went light that one ball the last game, but this is a Really nice shot, straight up about the eighth board, rolling up into the pocket, and vicious ring and 10. Wondering why he's blowing in the thumb hole. What happens is the heat out of his lungs creates a little bit of moisture in that thumb hole, and just, just gives him a little bit better feel and grip on that ball. Does it on a strike ball as well. You know, some players do that, and it becomes habit. It's, it's all feel and what they like to feel inside that thumb hole. World score of 68 complete, three frames. And Dom Barrett taking the next step, a key, as Barrett with the Optimus in his arsenal. Imagine you blowing your breath on a mirror, right? That's kind of what they're doing in that thumb hole. I used to do it a lot. Just then enough. I, yeah, just enough to give you a little tacky feel. Then I just started using rosin. <laughs> Splits the 8-9 to nine Barrett, 30, 60, 90, world score. Let's take a look at our track tip talk involving Don Barrett's release, folks. 
Those of you at home that think you have to turn your hand around the side of the bowling ball to get it to curve, we'll take a look where Dom Barrett's fingers are. You can see he's tucking the pinky right there, and those fingers are behind. And look at that ball roll. That's what makes the ball adhere to the lane surface, and all it is is a quarter turn at release to get that ball to curve. Perfect through three. Barrett, fourth frame. Don Barrett, another player among many out here on the PBA Tour that have gone to 16 pounds. And that's our first world hambo. Fagan loves traveling the world. He loves visiting Japan and Tokyo. Emily and Mike got to go to Paris, and they really enjoyed the history and the culture and the mix of the ancient as well as uh, the new and the pop culture part of traveling on the World Bowling Tour. Fourth frame. Wow. There's a nice break. Next Sunday, the Stars turn out in force as nine-time NBA All-Star Chris Paul hosts the 2016 Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. Among those scheduled to appear, Terrell Owens, Hope Solo, C.J. Anderson from the Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos next Sunday, CP3 on ESPN at 1 Eastern. Chris Hardwick's going to be there. Can't wait to see him. He's always a blast to hang out with. A little before midnight with Hardwick. And mm. Messenger misses the 10. So that's the story of this match thus far through five frames is the pin carry. Although Dom Barrett, Dom Barrett has high flushed four shots in a row. Look at this messenger. Mm. Looked like it was on its way to take the 10 out. So it's a 10 pin in the first, a 10 pin in the third, and a 10 pin in the fifth for Mike Fagan. Spare means 10 plus count nine, nine for 19 under the world scoring format. 117 completed fifth frame for Mike Fagan. Dom Barrett likes to try to gain advantages over those with more power, and he feels that creativity, Randy, the best part of his game as we look at the top finishes on the World Bowling Tour. How is creativity a part of Dom's game? Well, he is able to visualize and see ball motion on the lanes, and then he kind of gets that in his mindset and then just basically dictates how he wants the ball to come out of his hand to replicate that. He's very creative. He, he, he's, he's a very visual guy. And, uh, you know, obviously you have to have the athleticism and the tools in the box to back that up. Dom has that. And then he also then takes his versatility added to that creativity. Yeah, and again, it's all, you know, it's it's the complete package. It, what it's, it, it's what creates champions out here, and it's what creates world champions. Right now, Dom Barrett, perfect through five frames. By the way, the last shot had just a hint of filth on it. <laughs> Dom's goal is to pick the right time and the right tool and execute. And he executes in the sixth, another 30 in frame. All Dom Barrett. Six consecutive strikes. Barrett in command as the World Bowling Tour will crown its men's champion when we return to Woodland Bowl. Now you can outfit yourself like the pros with official PBA jerseys that are available exclusively at PBA.com. The jerseys are made from high-performance fabric and can be customized for each person or team. Head to PBA.com today and get started. Just click the custom jersey link to get started. And before we get back to action, Kimberly Pressler is lane side with the three-time PBA Player of the Year. I am, Mike. Thanks so much. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time and talking with me right now. So why don't you walk me through what happened in the 10th? Yeah, I don't like these conversations, Kimberly. I'm having them way too often with you, but um, 
look, you know, I, I just wanted to try and get the ball to get a little further to the right. And, uh, you know, I just kind of went through the swing a little too quick. It got to uh, my release point a little bit too fast and it just changed the launch angle a little bit. So instead of uh, shooting off to the right, it kind of went up the lane a little too much. I was really hoping for a four pin and then I saw the 10 pin standing with it. It, uh, yeah, no good. No good at all. But despite the loss, how fun was it going up against Mike, your friend who you haven't had a chance to do that with in a while? No, I liked it better when he was retired. And I think he should, Mike, retire for, for good. Okay, stop beating me. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for being a good sport. Guys, Cheers. back to you. Thanks, Kimberly. Mike Fagan reaching uh, the championship. He has reached the crossroads in his career and he's taking time out to study in business school at the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley in pursuit of his MBA, three-time All-American at St. John's College grad, looking to extend his collegiate career. And back in competition and in a hole, sixth frame using world scoring. 30 pins would make 147. Sorely needed, and that is the result. World score of 147 complete for Fagan. Well, he was tired of going light, so he went to a stronger ball, and that one faced up nicely for a little high flush action. Fagan trails by 33, and another look. Big high backswing, but it's such a beautiful backswing in that it's in line, just a little bit to the outside, drops to the inside on the way down, helps keep the hand and the elbow in. Just all about being in position. As Fagan pursues his MBA, he has now looked differently upon his 14 years as a pro bowler and looking back on his two years qualifying for world bowling points, just uh, enjoying those two Ooh. years just a little bit more and a, a little bit more time to complete his frame in the seventh. Well, the NBA is nice, but right now he needs to recall his DNA from when he used to bowl a lot on TV and win. He is just a couple of frames away from taking this title down, but the, the only way this is going to happen is by him striking out. Seventh frame, perfect strike plus 30 in the complete frame. World score 177 through seven for Fagan. And you could see the stronger bowling ball sucking up to the pocket much sooner. Last two shots are any, any indication whatsoever about the ball change. Right now it looks perfect. $10,000 bonus for a perfect game is in effect for the world scoring. In other words, be the first time that a 10 strike perfect game would pay off. Seventh frame for Barrett. Six stops the 10. Anytime you see that motion, that type of pin action when you're right handed, boy, if you could bottle that up and sell it, you'd, you'd make a fortune. Watch the six spin go to the sidewall for Dom Barrett. Bang. I mean, this is quick, too. This is just the six. He's just giving a little high karate to the 10 pin. Perfect through seven. Three more strikes. Frames eight, nine, and 10. Remember, only one ball in the 10th frame under the new World Bowling Tour scoring system. He is three strikes away from for $10,000 and this championship. Barrett drills it straight back, no doubt strike in the eighth. Perfect, through eight, world score, 240. Making it look pretty easy. And that's what a top professional does when they're clicking on all cylinders. <laughs> Dom Barrett's got a lot of power. He's got a great game, does all the right things, and when he gets the right ball in his hand and executes, he's as good as anybody on this tour. Non-title event here at the World Bowling Tour as the perfect game would pay off in the bonus but not be officially recognized and a non-title event for Barrett. But first, Fagan in the eighth. Hits in ten. Oh well, fun while lasted. Right now, max score for Mike Fagan, 256. Don Barrett needs nine, nine, 
That'll put him at 258. But there's bigger fish to fry, Mike Shea. Strike in the ninth, strike in the tenth, 10,000 bucks. He's buying, everybody's happy. A grand per strike, the world score, where 300 is still a perfect game, just requiring 10 strikes. Barrett, ninth frame. World Bowling Tour Men's championship within reach. And he's got nine! That 16-pounder with all that power sure goes through the pins hard, doesn't it? So a world score situation, a perfect game. Normally you'd have to do that three times in the depth, but under these circumstances, just one more strike from perfection. Well, he's won this championship, and he's just one strike away from Another bonus. Be fun to watch this thing knock all 10 down. Don Barrett is your World Bowling Tour men's champion, defeating Mike Fagan. Nine strikes in a row, world scoring system. $10,000 bonus for the 10th. That is perfect. 10 goes down, 10 grand. Men's World Bowling Tour champion, Barrett in style. He didn't know it. He does now. Ten thousand dollar bonus. On top of twenty thousand, and the World Bowling Tour Men's Champion is England's Dom Barry. Great to see Mike Fagan back on the lanes and Dom Barrett 10 times for 10 grand. The first world score of 300. Kimberly Pressler catches up with our champion when we come back. The first perfect game using world scoring 300 for Dom Barrett and he claims the title of world's best bowler in the World Bowling Tour Men's Championship. Time now for the GEICO Championship recap, Randy. And starting with the ladies, Danielle McEwen got off to a nice start, kept in the three-bagger third quarter, the fifth, fifth frame. She wins the ladies' championship, 256-243 over Titan Kelly Kulik. Then in the men's matchup that you just witnessed, Dom Barrett, perfect. 10 strikes in a row. In the new World Bowling Tour scoring system, 10 is all you need for perfection. Dom Barrett wins the title, 300 to 256. Now let's go down to the lanes and Kimberly. Thanks, guys. And Tom Clark, I think you have a little something for Dom. Thanks, Kim. Congratulations, Dom. You got to love this new scoring system. 10 strikes. You still bowl the first 300 using the World Bowling scoring system, and that's still worth a bonus of $10,000 from the PBA, so congratulations. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like the scoring system. Haven't missed on it yet. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. That's great. So, Dom, you bowled a perfect 300 game, got yourself $10,000. How much do you like this new scoring system? You know, it's a little bit different. I understand the reasons behind it. And, uh, you know, as long as we get to bowl on the biggest stage, which is on tour and on PBA and on the World Bowling Tour, then I think that's great for bowling, and I couldn't be happy to to win this event. Well, it's got to be pretty exhilarating when everything matches up and you just bowl like that. Walk us through the actual match. Um, well, you know, I had the practice before and I just wanted to come out and enjoy myself. My friends are here. They've kind of uh, started to wear suits and make the uh, night of it. And um, I just kind of got in the atmosphere a little bit and try to enjoy myself as much as possible. Taking it serious, obviously, because we're still bowling for a title and, and it's been a long two years uh, building up to this. So. Uh, but just have a little bit of fun and enjoy myself. And um, as you can see from the scores and the ball reaction, the lane conditions weren't too challenging, really, and it's a great bowling centre here. But um, we managed to make the most of it, and, yeah, couldn't be happier. Now, we talked about it earlier in the show that it's been a little bit since you've been in the winter circle here in the United States because you have won internationally. What's it like to be back? You know, it's great. You know, I said before that I just had to keep bowling good because I've been bowling pretty well on TV, and uh, eventually it's going to work out, and, yeah, it happened today, so it's great. Well, Dom, congratulations on winning the WBT championship.
Congratulations to Dom Barrett, World Bowling Tour men's champion, and a little extra, 10 grand for the first world score of 300. Our next telecast of the PBA Tour will be the Chris Paul PBA Celebrity Invitational. Chris Paul and friends, next Sunday at 1 Eastern. The best bowlers in the world, around the world in 720 days. Two years on the World Bowling Tour and Danielle McEwen with Dom Barrett claim the World Bowling Tour women's and men's titles for Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. This is Mike Jakubowski. So long from Woodland Bowl next